हाय एंड वेलकम टू द स्पेसिफिक आस्क आज मेरे साथ मेरे दो दोस्त मृणालिनी और रुचिका हैं मृणालिनी इज़ अ लॉयर एंड रुचिका इज़ अ साइकोलॉजिस्ट दिस अ स्पेसिफिक रीजन व्हाई वी हैव गॉट दीज टू टुगेदर विद अस वी विल इंट्रोड्यूस दैट रीजन टू यू अ लिटिल लेटर बट आई वांट टू इंट्रोड्यूस यू टू दीज ब्यूटीफुल लेडीज टुडे हाय मृणालिनी हाउ आर यू हाय हाय ऋषभ हाय रुचिका वेलकम थैंक यू फॉर कमिंग अ प्लेजर वी बोथ नो द रीजन व्हाई वी आर हियर टुडे राइट अम द probably the one place that you guys touch common ground is with people of course uh, where clients come to you for marriage counseling let's say and they decide that it's not working so you refer some to mrilanali saying ki bhai they going to call it quits and please you know take this case up and vice versa where they come to you deciding they want to call it quits and eventually say nahi yaar ruk ja let's work at it and maybe you send them to uh, ruchika for counseling well um for myself uh, for the people i referred uh, ruchika to are people who are going through the trauma of maybe sometimes also during litigation oh yeah um for example um, after we filed a, a child custody case i felt the child really needed some hand holding because i can't i can't do all of it myself um while you counsel parents and even i mean uh, not to take away from what ruchika does but even in my own role I feel I do a lot of hand holding which is not legal. It's in the sense that it's not it's them processing this whole situation. So then uh, depending and you know it's a question of trust. So if a client says I'm not being able to deal with this, then yes, I will say okay, if you'd like you can go to this person and you know she's well versed in taking care of uh, these situations. Uh but it's it's not an automatic that you come to me and i will send you to yeah, ruchika of course yeah. so it's um, it's a very delicate relationship that one has with clients and similarly i'm sure for ruchika absolutely so a lot of times um i do see couples and they're not one of one of the person wants to look at their options even before they speak about divorce they just want to know they just want to get an idea of what it would entail and at that time also i do refer them to minalini that okay go have a word see how it is going to be uh for you um so yeah if somebody is looking to get separated or file divorce um i can trust minalini yeah um i'll share some facts with you which i googled of course <laughs> um and these are all facts from india and our local territories a uh, number of divorces per year have more than doubled in the last two decades rate of divorce in urban cities like delhi mumbai and bengaluru is more than 30% that's 3 out of 10 uh, which is a scary number divorce applications in delhi mumbai bengaluru kolkata and lucknow have more than tripled in the last 3 years so again i'll be looking not at a the surprising co- fact thanks right? to covid right we're looking at <laughs> post covid period and yeah. it's not people have been locked in together for a long time and they realize this is not what where they want to be uh northern states like up bihar haryana and rajasthan which are primarily known as patriarchal societies have relatively low divorce rates and separation rates northeastern regions in india have the highest divorce rates in india uh, maharashtra ranks at number 1 delhi surprisingly ranks at number 5 and um, mp is at number 10 where i thought delhi would probably be one of the top states to be there because well they are very culturally rich people um majority people are in the age range of 20 to 35 people as old as 20 are getting divorced and uh, more men are searching for an option out than women which is 56% to 44% Now, knowing these facts, my next question to you guys is: What do you think are the main causes uh, for people looking to just jump into and calling it quits? Well, I'm not a uh, you know sociologist or somebody who, but I can only speak from my own experience. When I started in 2006 to now, um, as you said, younger people are coming to me for divorces. Equally, older people are coming to me for divorces. So people. typically then their 60s early 70s they're like i we can have a life beyond you know it's not like i can't have another spouse yeah so that i think is a very interesting change um that to see that demographic also be so active in wanting to uh call it you know 
close the curtain on uh, on their marriage um possibly because you know now they can shed things have changed the perception of what it is to be a divorcee and whether divorce is acceptable so i think that has led to i think an increase you in think divorce rates psychologically willing to commit to somebody these days are we too soft as a generation maybe the next ones coming Our commitment phobia has existed for the longest time. I've heard true, so actually. many people say it, even in our generation. Yeah. That oh my god, oh my god, people having cold feet just before their weddings. Uh huh. So. On the wedding day as well. On the wedding day also. Yeah. So there was also a concept of premarital counseling where two people come together to sort so kind of sort out their differences. Okay. Um, which I don't see a lot of couple opting for it now. Let's say, um. in a situation where you love someone right and um, um let's say um, your family doesn't approve of that person right um what should this person do somebody who loves someone and your family is like no no we got a better fit for you or a better fit for the family do you think uh, the person should go with what the family is deciding just because for the sake of happiness for the family or do you think this person should still go ahead and marry the person he or she loves and because there's a, there's a reason why i'm asking you this question i'll i'll put the reason if this was a client in my session i would have said do what makes you happy do what makes you happy do what makes you happy if you are happier choosing to stand by the love of your life do it but if you're going to choose her and be unhappy that because of you i have to leave my parents then don't take that Yeah, but Root. sometimes people get torn between these two worlds, which are close. This is to... unfortunate. I know it's very unfortunate. I've seen women who have backed off because the guy has been put in that position, uh, and they've completely backed off. That it's okay. I'd rather stay without you than with the pressure and the burden off that you had to leave for your parents. Than to stay with a miserable you. Yeah. As well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Your take? Well, I've seen cases where um, you know the story is um, I had to. I I had to choose him over my family and then things go south. Equally I've seen situations where the person will do what the family dictates and still things go south. So what what I'm trying to tell you is that it's not as the either of those situation leads to a necessarily successful result. Yeah. You know sometimes even if you've gone with the consent of your parents and married somebody they may not be supporting you during a um, divorce case absolutely yeah so then uh, you know it's a, this is such a personal decision to the pers- for the person really depends on their set of priorities and what they hold dear um the adults in my family they have a rule and i think on some day they decided to sit together and they, they came up with this whole idea ki jitne bhi bachche honge na next generation ko unko sabko ye bolenge ki bhaiya tumne karna hai jo karna you take that decision tomorrow you don't come to us and say ki bhaiya main ko aapki wajah se kariye shaadi you own up to that decision choose your life and we are happy with it but don't come to us and say i you made this decision for me because i mean that's half assing it in any case right so and that's the reason i feel when i see clients who are going through separation or who have you know who really think their marriage is not working out yeah more of them are from the arranged marriage background because that's not the decision they had taken anyway yeah in love marriage i still see that kind of a little um, more towards okay we made this decision so we have to stick to it yeah that kind of sense of responsibility okay so a very very slight difference between the two it makes a huge difference right because eventually if the decision is to stay and try to work on it and call it quits it's a world of, yeah. Uh, right yeah. itself yeah i mean one of my aunts was told you know why is your child not getting married and she said um you know, and he, she was being told you know please find somebody for your daughter blah 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 and she says no no if things go south then she will blame me if i have found somebody and things go south so it's better she find somebody and if something is to go wrong she is responsible and the parents are right when they decide like this right <laughs> yeah yeah it's absolutely it's only fair um men are considered guilty until proven innocent do you think law in india is gender biased that's not the case it de- you know when when you say men are considered guilty that's that's a judgment uh, statement you're making that's not the case okay uh, legally legally we have to prove whatever we're saying in court but yes i mean in the beginning of a case when you know applications are filed a lot works on perception 
I'm not so sure that men all that women always have the upper hand in court. Um, and this is something that's often touted, right? Women have all these laws that protect them. But if you ask me, when I'm when I'm, um, for example, I was helping a legal aid applicant get um, maintenance from her husband. It's been two years, and while we've got the maintenance, the money is still not come. So now I have to file for yet another execution proceeding for it to come. So I don't know if it's gender bias. I don't think it is. Uh, there are there are there are laws that there, that are there to protect the weaker. Yeah. Now whether that's a gender thing or a, <laughs> I'm not so sure. Okay. Oh, you don't want to say it. <laughs> no, I think uh, they're there for a reason and. There was a there was a there was a, a social media post which went viral. It's of course it came out as a joke, but uh, I think it was funny because it's true. I said something like feminist banke dowry to neeli, feminist banke shadi mein dahej nahi liya tha, wo divorce likhe aadi property le gayi. Well, if you ask the women there, they they have been told that they get this 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 amount, and then when it comes to actual court, the reality of it seeps in. So. People love saying that, oh, you know, women will take half the property. Invariably, sometimes I'm just fighting that the women even stay in that property. So there's a big disconnect as to what the impression is, I think, outside. But when it comes in court, there's a, it's a different picture. It's not as, you know, people think we will get these fat settlements. It doesn't work like that. So I think media plays a big role. How they show divorce happening on movies is... So different from how it happens in reality, and that's the reason I tell them. Go. The drama is still. Uh, I think it's something on point. Don't you think? Uh, drama is always there. There's a lot of drama. Don't get me wrong there, but this drama that you know women suddenly. Uh, there's a reason why those laws exist because it's they are not they don't have the upper hand. Women don't have the upper hand in a lot of situations, especially if you're not financially independent. Yeah. Yeah. I read that prenup is not legal in India. Is that true? Not as of now. You will have to. Where as I, it, it can't be legally enforced. So if you've entered into a prenup, a prenuptial agreement, it's not as if I can go to court and say, okay, as per this agreement, I was told I would get this much on divorce. No, but what at best you could use it in court to say this was the understanding between the parties. But it's not as if you can just go and. Uh, Get it enforced. Oh, but we are talking about a progressive. Our India, India needs to be progressive. We need to grow. But the why times. do you but think prenups are progressive? I mean, why are they not? Why uh, two you... people entering a marriage pre-decide what their lives are going to be if they decide to separate after that? But you're already starting the marriage on the assumption that you're going to separate. Yeah, but we can always discuss that. But I, don't you think that's a little more mature way to go, saying that okay, I understand that nothing might last. This thing might not might not last forever, and. It is always said like nothing lasts forever, right? Ho sakta hai, and people, and you can always like, I think it's a very, very mature way to get into a relationship saying, ki, hai. it might go down south someday, right? Uh, how about we safeguard ourselves? What's wrong with that? Well, I, in fact, I would say prenups, prenups might be a good idea because a lot of women uh, give up their career uh, and they contribute to the f- uh, stability in the home for the man to of course, yes. earn and they find themselves you know uh, the man has everything on paper in his name she has given him that stability and then when it comes to actual litigation she's she's only getting maintenance or she's getting alimony and those assets would have been sort of built up with both their um, effort are not given it should be 50-50 maybe that then you don't uh, did you uh, did you watch the World Cup football this time around? No. Any of the matches? Regrettably uh, not. There was a there was a team that dazzled, okay, and nobody expected that team to dazzle. Uh, the captain of that team, Ashraf Hakimi, uh, he's a great footballer. Like a major club has taken him up. Uh, he got into a divorce with his wife. Now a footballer of that standing makes millions of dollars a year, millions. Uh, when he got divorced, his wife got nothing. Because nothing was in Ashraf's name. It was all in the mother's name. So whatever fee he was getting, whatever assets he held, everything was held by the mother. And there was no money coming to Ashraf. Now, legally, 
she couldn't go for half of his wealth right yeah and do you know why it got viral on the internet because people enjoyed it people said wow well done ashraf <laughs> i i'm very sure there was no woman saying well done ashraf because that's not fair i'm sure and i do get such clients who, who people were laughing about it everybody shared it that's how i know about it because instagram hey and it's there and ashraf come in like, come on it's a it's football everybody's following it world cup just happened and he's a big star now and everybody's talking about it kuch nahi diya yaar usne he got got off squad free he didn't have to pay anything yaar what a genius idea and well, it's uh, just like believe me in a lot of uh, litigation in india too especially in delhi i can say that is the endeavor of every <laughs> in in many cases where the sun immediately starts when things go south starts transferring, transferring property, properties tra- starts you know maybe se- uh, arranging finances in a certain way the the sun has nothing equally i will say a woman uh, if she knows her marriage is going south i've seen a lot of women plan leave their job not do anything Wait, so that means can... my next question i'm actually always cautious about like i always wonder if the woman made more yeah if she had more assets to her let's say oh, the woman is rich she's got 100 crores the boy's got nothing can he file for maintenance well under the hindu marriage act she can uh it's uh, uh, who can file for it the woman can m- a man can also ask for maintenance so but it depends also on which act you're marrying under under special marriage act it's not only the woman can ask for maintenance If you're married under Hindu Marriage Act, for instance, a man can ask for maintenance. It's a, it's 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 an interesting and this really uh, <laughs> people get married under acts. Yes, of course. I got married. No, it's not fair. But you're registering a marriage, right? So, but I, for example, I got married under Christ uh, under Special Marriage Act because I'm Christian. My husband's Hindu. Okay. So yeah, it, it depends which 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 law governs you makes a difference to. And can you please tell the difference of both of those, like how it goes in both the? Well, uh, there are no feras in my case. I got no, no, I was married... talking about law. I was talking about the Hindu Marriage Act and the. It's special... it's it's the parliamentarians thought that that's the provision under the Hindu Marriage Act. A man can also ask for maintenance. Okay. For whatever reason, the parliamentarians didn't think that under Special Marriage Act, the man should be asking. Uh. It's it's not something I can change. I mean, it's something that the. Okay. Uh, same way that we can't have prenups in India, right? <laughs> Please petition, work towards it. <laughs> wow! Storm Parliament. <laughs> Let's see how I feel about it in a few years. <laughs> Probably. Um, are we meant to be monogamous as human beings? Research says that human beings are not monogamous. Yeah. Society has made them. Yeah. Hence, in a lot of religion, it's okay to have more than one partner. Um. largely speaking is the concept accepted yes a lot of clients come in who are happy to be in open relationships but that's a settlement they have is it by rule everybody follows it yeah most likely no most people identify as monogamous or at least say that they identify as monogamous probably because they've never explored um polyamory yeah before marriage before marriage of course after marriage oh, yeah. also so the people who've not been in many relationships or don't yeah. understand yeah. it better yeah. or don't know the exact dynamics of it they probably want to like go out and um people want to have kids uh, they want to live their life before they have kids right these days everybody wants it's all about me time and after a certain amount of time they realize that they don't even want the responsibility for each other eventually and uh, is love yourself first becoming a big reason for this i feel it's important to love yourself first until your cup is not full you can't pour into for somebody else fair enough so as long as you are happy then having a partner having kids can all sound more easy to deal with if it's just a pressure put on you then i don't know how you're going to justify that role but you do understand that love yourself first can be misunderstood right uh, especially a lot of people who uh, what was the term that you use emotional quotient is not too high right hmm. uh, if i tell somebody social media tells me love yourself first right hmm. somebody like me who has a low emotional quotient i'd be like okay yeah i should love myself first right now i stop caring about everybody else i stop being responsible i stop caring about what others have to say which is actually empowering which is great if i can do that 
but uh, it takes me to become a person for a few years in my life who doesn't understand where i'm heading because i'm just trying to seek pleasure that i don't know hormone rush in my head saying you know i'm happy that you know whatever i'll do whatever it takes to make myself happy is that being responsible in your opinion like or do we have to first understand what love yourself first means there's always a difference between love yourself and act selfish yeah you of know course. there will always be that different when we say love yourself we are not saying that just prioritize yourself and nobody else but that's what it sounds like you know yeah it sounds like that there's a um, personality disorder also i don't know if you've heard about it called narcissism which is an extreme of love yourself and stop caring about others so love yourself when we propagate love yourself we only say that take out some time for yourself you know practice self care mm uh-huh. man at the end of the day is a social being so you will have that social set up around you around your immediate system of just you yeah but there has to be those little moments that you have for yourself as well there's no need to just keep doing for others because at the end of the day you're just left by yourself regretting a lot of decisions you've made people i see who are above 60 are the ones who actually start to think especially women you know i spent my whole life taking care of my children and now they don't want to even you know talk to me every day you know uh, do i say yes kids are responsible for it no you don't have kids to just fulfill your need of emotional um needs when you grow older and then to come up with ideas to take care of yourself is limited resources are limited you know so that's the reason we say that you know just keep doing little little for yourself as well and nurture yourself but that doesn't come at the cost of just ignoring everybody around okay um it sort of builds in, it, this builds into the next question itself right uh people who've compromised all their lives um they say that marriage is a compromise i think that's the only set of people who say that right marriage is a lot of adjustment yes is compromise the only way to have a marriage see the lifetime and promises adjustment for sure is compromise sa- sounds very sad and this synonyms compromise almost seems like you're giving up something yeah. that you hold dearly adjustment is a, i think a better word fine tune it one person likes to go out every day the other person as an introvert wants to stay at home every day adjustment would be okay let's go th- thrice a week outside and three days we are going to spend at Find home. Find a middle ground, yeah. Compromise would be either that person is seven days sitting at home and this person is sit- just constantly have to oh, get along for so- social events. Find a middle ground together. Yeah, yeah. Achieving what you want, achieving what I yeah. want. Win-win, right? Yeah. Okay, interesting. Um, what kind of... Uh, so, I'm, I'm a, I'm, I think we didn't talk enough about cheating, right? Because I'm, I swear this is a big thing. uh and when i say this like as a psychologist do people come to you and admit to you of course in confidentiality that they are seeing someone behind their spouse's back yes quite often regularly um uh, what kind of a psychological effect do you think it has on the other individual it really depends as the other person know that their partner is cheating or not yeah you know i've also had people who've come and told me that their pa- partners are cheating on them and they're okay with it okay because they enjoy the lifestyle they're getting okay and one person literally said that you know i'd be happier men are going to cheat and i'm just quoting that person men are going to cheat it's better to cry in a mercedes than on the road <laughs> it's more comfortable huh? i understand what you mean but uh... you know but um when i see somebody who comes and talks about how they have an emotional or physical connection with somebody else outside their marriage it's not my job to tell them they're right or they're wrong my job is to encourage them to be open about it to their partner and if this is not working out step out of it yeah it's unfair that your partner doesn't know when you're doing it if you're over your partner tell them get out of the marriage and pursue what you want to pursue and give them an opportunity to pursue what they want to pursue yeah what do you think is the biggest disappointment when it comes to like two spouses looking at each other saying i don't know after a few years you're just disgusted looking at each other like what are you wearing what are you eating how do you talk how do you sleep how do you act how do you snore right we keep seeing fallacies in everybody we sit around with right but uh, what do you think uh, 
uh, is the biggest thing that drives people apart over the years. Especially like when you mentioned like women of 60 years old or 55 years old and they spent virtually a lifetime with somebody, right? Playing the part, playing the role. Uh, why do people drift apart primarily? Bunch of reasons, right? Choti choti bahut sari reasons hai. But what is that one thing that could probably like just drive the action to the relationship saying, you know, this is done. Where does it, like, psychologically speaking, where does it kill the relationship, do you think? Where, where does it break it off? I think the actual act comes after a major trigger. It might be cheating for some people. A lot of women start to feel disconnected from their partner after having kids because that's when the real, you know, struggle begins when you have to take care of a house, you have to look after your children, you have to also manage your work and the amount of effort the other person is putting into all of this to support you through that journey. I've seen a lot of women have come and spoken about and that was the seed from which I started to feel a disconnect. And then it's just multiple reason piling on on and on after a couple of years. Yeah. Um, if you talk about one sudden reason, most likely it's when one partner figures out the other one was cheating. So that becomes one major trigger. And distrust. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, more or less. Yeah. You wanted to add something? No, just that, uh, I mean, at least I can only tell you from the stories I've had to deal with uh, professionally. I see more, more or less marriage bre marriages break down slowly, you know. Clearly, even when you're telling the tale uh, in the petition, you can see uh, with every passing day, one person or two people making little less effort to be with each other. And maybe one of them decides, okay, this is done. The other person still probably hung up on them, but one person is completely out of okay, yeah, name. This is not going to work. Right? Yeah, uh, I, yeah, definitely. Is there a civil way to part ways? Do you think? Do you think as humans, are we capable of it? First of all? Of course, of course, of course. They, of course we are. If, if they're both, capable of it. If both people agree that things have not been working out for them, they have kids involved and, you know, you want to look after the mental health of the kids also who are constantly witnessing the parents being so, um, you know, um, not too cordial with each other. So a lot of times parents take that decision for children. A lot of times mature people come and know that, okay, this is the end of it. Um, or that's not what they signed up for and that's not what they expected out of marriage. And when I'm talking about these people, there are people who've dated for 10, 11 years and gotten married. And in two years, realized this is not. We were not meant to be married. Yeah, we were you happy know. together, but yeah. to be married to each other is a different story. It's yeah? a different story. Thankfully, law rewards you if you if you're willing to be decent with each other and be fair and reasonable. You can have a mutual consent divorce in six months. If you don't want to do that, then you're going to be perishing and languishing in court for a long yeah, you time. You can be petty about things and you just completely. Yeah, I mean, it's sometimes pettiness, sometimes it's also uh, absurd claims of uh, money, you know. Um, so it, it can be a mix of both of them. What is the most absurd, cla absurd claim, of claim of money that you've ever come across? I wouldn't say it's absurd, but my highest settlement has been uh, one where we give the wife nine crores. And, and it was a beautiful mutual because there I, I was representing the husband and he was very mindful of uh, making sure that his wife is, you know, that there was a, clearly a respect, respect there. there. yeah. And uh, those kind of mutuals are amazing. I've seen couples who don't fight in public, married for like 10, 15, 20 years or whatever, and they've got kids. Uh, they don't talk, but they don't fight. They don't quarrel. They've just come to an understanding that I'm habitual of the other person. The other person is habitual of me. And I think we can carry out this life because we have kids together. That's probably one of the things. And the other thing that I've also noticed people uh, not uh, go for a divorce. One of the reasons that I've seen is that societal pressure. Yeah. Society kya karegi? Log kya kahenge yaar? Hum logo ke baare mein baat karte hai yaar ki dekh uske saath aisa ho gaya. Mere saath agar aisa ho gaya to yaar kaise mein handle karunga? I think we're not built, some people are not built to handle that societal pressure as well, right? I think the rationale behind it is mostly kids, by the way. I don't see a lot of couple who come and talk about this, um, you know, 
adjustment of living in the same house and not talking to each other but living in the same house for the sake of kids but i do see a lot of kids who have come and spoken about this arrangement parents have wow and some kids are resilient some kids feel that it's okay as long as mom and dad are together yeah and some kids have very you know part by part that kind of emotional stress that they have to go through to see that kind of arrangement in their own house feel that you know it's just better they just part ways do you think uh, some parents believe that they are playing that role for the kids the kid won't find out that there's something wrong with it but the kids are too smart the child the always kids know. always know they just feel that okay the kids are at least safe from from what society is going to say what kids are becoming so mature these days they come and say what can you talk to my parents and tell them that it's not working and they should just get away and find different other partners and these are kids who are 14 15 by the way wow they they have that they have that emotional quotient but the parents probably oh absolutely i remember there was this one case um litigating in court and uh, i think 4 years had passed the child had come 12 12 or 13 and honestly i mean that was a, uh, we had been contesting that divorce it was a child who got the mutual through because he was at that age where he could have that influence you know he's a, a i wouldn't say he uh, he's matured in that sense of an adult but he was he knew how to tackle his parents yeah who were bickering over him and visitation and all the rest so in that case it was the child who got that mutual through uh which uh, which i'm finding you know kids are amazing these days yes yeah but it's still not good to say that you know a 12 year old was subject to that and right yeah i it's know it's unfortunate right it's unfortunate but it's more unfortunate for these kids to be living in a dysfunctional house than living with two separate set of so true so true and this is something that i have to sometimes encourage my clients you know handhold them you're not taking a wrong step for yeah, your child it's not if because of you it's, it's they, these things happen that violence at home it's going to impact them long term yeah and so don't you know don't second guess your decision based on that absolutely yeah so do you think it's important for the parents to come out and sit with the kid or the kids and tell them that guys this is not you because of you we both love you of course we are you're an integral part of it do you think they need that conditioning from the parents do you think they will even understand if the parents talk to them it really depends on the age of the parent preteens of, of the, the child, child sorry yeah. yeah um probably an 8 9 year old child would start understanding yeah um i've had clients who decided to get separated when they have kids as young as 3 and 4 5 also uh you know without having to get into that detail of oh we are getting separated but the child understands that oh from through the week i'm with this parent and on weekend i'm with this parent yeah they get used to that idea and gradually when when they're around 8 9 that's the time you can sit with them have a conversation if needed get them to a child psychologist i know of kids who grown up without one of the parents but thinking that the parents were still together uh one of the parents was far away in some other state for the last 20 years they talk on the phone they do those video calls or whatever um uh, but the parent never visits and he or she is just grown up to be like that and till the time that the, that person got married there was that illusion that you know the parents are still together and everyone else f- except that person that kid everyone could tell that the parents are separate and that kid still was oblivious to the fact that you know it happened uh the parent came around for his wedding stayed for a day and went back and even now the, uh, that person has a hard time understanding or adjusting to the fact that the parents are not together it's still mama it's still papa they're still together it's the whole story and i think uh, uh, the person has just put that story in it in their own head and you know this is it it's a good home it's not a broken home i have no idea how to talk to that I've person i had a similar case where a client comes in the client is 1920 yeah and would always speak about her mother and her father her father being very involved in in her life choices and her school and college and whatever and very recently uh, she told me that she came to know that 
her father is her mother and her, her mother is the second wife and they're not even married by the way okay so and the father already has a legal family with a wife and kids oh so my client's mother and her father um were in an Ill, illegitimate marriage and at the age of 20 coming to know about her is quite sad now what has happened she tells me that ruchika i'm not just lost a father i al- always in- imagined i have one yeah i also lost a mother because she wasn't honest to me so now i don't feel anything for her how do you think the parents could have handled it better at some point spoken about it as parents do you ever find But that right thing these are such delicate situations aren't they and what for the thinking I mean, she never come to know in order to protect the kid they kind of screwed it up don't you yeah. think yeah what she could have processed at the age of 12 it's so much more difficult to reprocess your whole life but these things are so tricky yaar yeah. you don't know what's the right path to take right that's true and that's also true. considering the fact that you know she uh, her the marriage is yeah he's he's not divorced that's what you're trying to say he's not divorced from the first so it has other other consequences so maybe that's why that's uh, that's a tough uh, situation actually uh that brings to me to my next question um custody battles mm. right what about them where does the law dictate does it favor the mother a little bit when the mother should have the child no uh well answering your second question first um primarily in custody battles um the court looks at what is the child's best interest right and then they will decide uh obviously a, a child who's breastfeeding maybe the child's best best interest is to be with the mother um so it really it's it it's not something that is etched in stone when you say what is child's best interest um and there's no assumption as such that the mother can only take care of the child or the there are assumptions in law in terms of age you know when the child is below 5 um but by and large when the matter reaches court when you're talking about custody battles yeah. obviously it's 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 a very stressful situation because the parents can't seem to come on the same page uh of how to deal with the situation and i find custody battles it's i mean the, all litigation anyway is stressful but custody battles especially are a little bit more because usually the child is you know brought to the family court child interacts with the with the judge depending about the uh, depending upon the child's age also but uh, yes very stressful and it's it's disservice when parents are not honest about um you know when the main custodial parent wants to just block a visitation or meeting with the other non custodial parent to try and secure a better settlement or you know to um for the future of the kid yeah yeah because you're bringing in your own you no know, dispute in terms of your marriage when it's brought into kids being stopped from meeting another parent it's very sad yeah um when he said uh, the court has the best interest of the child in mind right um let's say if it's a preteen or a teen child uh then he said best interest does it have to do with the financial aspect of it as well like who can take care of the kid better it would have to do with everything okay and see um what's their financial needs their uh, social needs uh with the child that's older the court will also uh uh listen to what the child has to say so 13 or 14 year old child in this day and age they have their own mind yeah so so, so the so, judge will yes, ask the, the kid the, the judge at least uh, i mean i've been practicing in the delhi courts here in many cases of mine with the child only want to stay with is not not just only stay but you know what is the issue uh, you know how much more do you want to meet the other parent the courts to take that into so they want to basically understand where the kid is comfortable and yeah because what happens is this parent will say the child doesn't want to meet that other parent will say no the child wants to meet she is blocking or he is blocking and you don't know the honest side of any so of these so i'm sure for a family court judge when they hear it from the child themselves uh what is their preference you know it's the term is in 
So at that time, um, that weighs with the judge. As a lawyer, have you ever like sort of sat down one day and thought about a judgment that judge gave, right? Especially in such delicate matters, and thought about क्या इस बंदे ने कैसे सोचा होगा? This is because those situations uh, are completely they they just play with your mind so much, and there is no clear path. You don't know what the honest story is of any of the sides because everybody is playing for leverage, more or less in this day and age. I think it's safe to say that. Uh, how does a judge actually come up with a solution to all these uh, such disputes? Because these are very delicate matters. They're very impersonable. They're very social. You know, the lives depend on it. and especially when it comes to a child you know it's a very de- tough decision making process so typically the uh, the the family court judge will decide two kinds of issues one is a final judgment yeah and the final judgment about say in a disputed custody will be only after parties have led evidence so leading evidence means you prove your case in court so if i'm saying he is of unsound mind right if i'm saying the the other the the parent is of unsound mind which is why i'm not letting the child go there I'll have to prove what I'm saying. Yeah. Um so it's not a guesswork in that sense. Each party gets But their in, chance to In basic cases don't you think it becomes murkier just because you want to have a claim at something and you just want to Well, more or less if you ask me most matrimonial litigation after 3 4 years of litigating both parties become responsible. They have some knocks uh, some sense knocked into them and they settle. They figure out how to work with their spouse. Okay. Because whatever it is you're tied to that's you you know because you have a child you have to figure out a situation of how working with them. Having witnessed multiple cases and what not. What do you think is the right way to go about it? Is there a right way to go about it because people will be they'll have their they'll have their proclivities, they'll have their inclinations. Jaisa unko sochna hai wo sochenge, right? Everybody has intent and sometimes it becomes too evident and there might be a certain individual also who is toxic, right? ऐसा होता है सबकी लाइफ सिंपल नहीं होती है और व्हाट डू यू थिंक इज स्टिल एंड अ सिंपल वे टू गो अबाउट इट यू नो दैट दिस मैरिज इज नॉट गोना वर्क शुड यू जस्ट जस्ट कंप्लीटली गो एड एंड जस्ट बी डन विद इट एंड अंडरस्टैंड ईच अदर्स टर्म्स एंड जस्ट सिट डाउन ऑन अ टेबल योर सेल्फ गो टू द कोर्ट सेट दिस इज वॉट वी डिसाइडेड दैट्स इट कैन इट बी इज इट दैट सिंपल नंबर वन इट कुड बी बट दैट्स वाई आई हैव अ जॉब बिकॉज इट्स नॉट दैट सिंपल इट इज इट इज वेरी इट्स it's because it's such an emotional issue for the parties involved it's never that easy uh but yeah i find there's a little bit more maturity now in a lot of people they do uh, for example we have something called pre litigation mediation where before you institute a case you go and try and see if you can resolve it mm. so more and more people are advising that lawyers are advising and litigants will ask about it there is uh, there's certainly there is uh, that's the ideal way to do it am i being presumptuous when i say that p- couples who enter therapy first or counseling first and then deciding it like to call it quits probably are more mature when it comes to that stage of getting separated like they've gone through a certain because counseling in itself is a very mature decision i don't think a, we i think okay i'm sorry i think 95% of the people lack that emotional maturity even today Like to decide that this needs attention or outside help. Don't you think? Uh, I don't know. What's your experience with this? I think clients who come for couple therapy would probably be more towards mutually working towards it. Mutually working towards it, and then mutually, if it's not working out, then mutually settling out of it. I think most problems come when one person wants to work and the other person doesn't want to. Fine. Or you know the other person is not giving enough reasons to call off the marriage. In that case that one person who's just dumped in a corner with okay this is the decision that's been made for them to settle you know without fighting for themselves I think it's is what probably minalni can elaborate on i feel those people in therapy are you know um even if counseling doesn't work out they might not want to settle outside also yeah so when you refer a certain couple who's gone through counseling and have actually agreed saying okay this is not going to work the kind of clients or the kind of people she refers to you then do you think they're easier in terms of their mutual understanding and the the case is not going to drag on for too long Is it a simple procedure? Do you think people have those 
people are a little more mature towards calling it quits when they have decided it. Do you think that? Or do you think it still gets all out of hand sometimes? No, there are lots of, uh, you know, the people who Rushika refers, yes, they are, they are clearer. There's more clarity as to how I want to call this quits. But there are a lot of people, I mean, who been on those pages despite not taking joint, you know, despite not taking therapy. Yeah. But um, I think anyway, it's a process. It's so difficult. You therapy to lena hi chahiye. And post divorce therapy to fir bhi chahiye hogi. I think that post, I don't know. Post because divorce therapy also people come in because now they are just more conscious of how to invest. Uh, emotionally again into a relationship yeah it's hard to trust again right it's hard to trust again however we always say that take some time off to process what you've gone through don't jump into another relationship because then you're taking a lot of baggage of the previous one but I still feel everybody deserves a second chance yeah I'll, in some cases a third <laughs> in some yes, cases there's third and a fourth serial <laughs> Serial litigants. <laughs> um, post-divorce life. Uh, when we are talking about therapy post-divorce, right? Who has it harder, men or women? I feel women. Because there's still a section of society who have their own prejudices for a divorced woman versus a divorced man. Um, and I'm just comparing the two. It's not to say that a person, a man who gets divorced has his life very easy. Of course, yeah. But it also depends on if you already had a significant partner while you were married. For you, moving on is easier because you already have someone. So the other partner is left alone. Yeah. You know, to just process what they've gone through and then, you know, get into the process of, okay, do I need to find someone else? But by the time the trust is so shattered and broken... It takes so much more time and I'm not going to gender stereotype it here. Even a man who's left alone and the and their wife found somebody else. Then also comes the kids. Who has the custody of kids? Who has to be the single parent for the child? Yeah. You know, even if there's shared custody, um, there's so many arrangements that you have to make. So it's difficult for both people who are going through divorce for sure. Yeah. Um, In terms of resettlement, yes, women have more issues to, you know, get into an arranged setup of finding someone else. But compared to probably a decade ago, it's still more easier because that acceptance has increased that it's okay if marriage hasn't worked out or somebody's divorced for a certain reason. I've known a few people who have post-divorce, they've completely changed their setting, right? They've left the place they used to live in, more shifted to another country, just because of the society, right? They can't hang out in the same circles. They can't go out to the same mama, papa dinners. They can't hang out with the same family, friends, even close relatives. Oh, oh, my child. Especially how they're made to feel. Yeah. Yeah. We are horrible wanna... towards... People don't realize you're re-traumatizing the person who's gone through it by constantly asking or by constantly reminding them what they're going through. You know, so a lot of people come in therapy and talk about why can't things be normal? Why do people have to remind me that I'm single or, you know, I've been, uh, I've got divorced, you know, or a lot of families start putting the pressure on to getting remarried again. Uh, and again, that's, that's again driving you, you that's to again a driving you to, to a, a different ditch yeah. altogether, right? Because you're not ready. You're not ready mentally somewhere. So a lot of people tend to then distance from everybody. Uh. And I've seen for couples who have had common friends, it's just more difficult. Yeah. Because how do you oh, divide the friends? You are being invited. I'm not coming. Oh, this person is invited. That's I'm another not social coming. Drama That's together, another right? where friends have to choose. Are you calling the husband? Are you calling the wife? Not easy on friends other than. It's not easy. You know, I've I've um, seen people in social setup where they're like, oh, where the wife says, okay, this time you're going to call the wife because last time you called the husband. I'm like, oh. So much to think about. Absolutely. You but can't I've offend also, the other. But I've also seen couple who who've I think mutually gotten divorced who are still very good friends. I've seen couple who go on holidays with their kids and then come back and resume their different lives. Yeah. So who are very you know, socially very there for each other also. Now there's this uh, social media influencer who I follow, okay. Now I, we can say social media isn't all truths, everything. Uh she is Amazing as a human being. Anupriya Kapoor Nanaga. 
and uh, divorced single mom. She got a son living with her. She is raising the kid. Uh, but both the husband and wife they've basically separated in a way where they've become friends eventually because the child is also there and he's growing. Of course, he finds that love with the dad also. Spends most of his time with the mom, and she recently attended her ex-husband's wedding. And she posted videos about it. She posted pictures about it. She's talking about it. She's trying to kill the dogma around not being friendly to your ex. And there's a life post uh, divorce, and she's trying to normalize it in such a beautiful way. And I think hats off to her that you know there are people who have the courage to do this. People don't have the courage to step out of the house post divorce. I'll tell you something funny about my friend. My childhood friend. Uh, in June, I had a son. I called him up. He didn't pick up. So I called his wife up. I said, "Yeah, uh, you know, I've just had a son, and he's not picking up. So I thought I'll tell you. Just, just inform him, okay? We just had a kid today, and uh, it's a boy, and whatever. We named him Kirov, right? I said, like, okay, I have to give you some news as well. And then she tells me that they're separated, right? And then that phone call from being a happy news became awkward very quickly. And then she told me, and they've been separated since December last last year. So six, seven months have passed." And I'm thinking, why is he talking to me about it? And then I assume that he's not ready to talk about it, right? So I let him be. We spoke ten times after that, me and my friend, and we keep talking about random things. And uh, eventually, I say something about how's uncle, how's auntie, and I don't ask how's your wife, right? It's like I have to tell you something. And I I already know it's been six months. I already know this. It's like, but why didn't you t- talk to me about it? How do I talk to you about it? I thought you were not ready. And he's laughing about it now. And he says, "I have put so much pressure in my head, thinking as to what my friends will think about it. And here you are understanding that probably I'm not ready, but I'm ready to talk about it. It's just that I just don't want you to disown me or, or you to judge me for getting divorced. I mean, why will I judge you for getting divorced? Like it's divorce. People are not compatible. They're not happy together. Better get separated and you know, just live on with your life. Go on, build something else. And we talk about it very normally now." But I keep telling him that you know I think it's not fair. I could have friend, been friends with your wife as well. She was a cool person. We should have still been friends. Just because I knew you before, I can't be friends with her now. But whatever has happened between you two, now again, we were a situation again. I uh, friends have to choose, right? And I, it was very funny for me when I thought he was probably in a bad space emotionally. But he was, he was up pretty fine. He was chilling in his life. He's. I mean, building everybody a should get their own time to process also. You know, uh, he moved on very quickly that one, but she, you know, uh, those six months must have been really hard for him as well. I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was, and uh, not somebody who shares too much. But yeah, um, last few ra- questions. Last few volleys. Last few volleys, which you are batting very well. By the way, you're just um, well done. Uh, do you think? Uh, the new age relationship dynamics like live in relationships by gummy by gummy i don't know what is happening these days right um um there's there's always people joking around you know that homosexual people are more happy these days you know they don't have to deal with this shit of course it's all jokes but do you think all these different relationship dynamics have uh, different aspects to them and maybe uh, uh, with the whole ideology fit into your head that you know people are doing this people are doing that people are doing that do you think people get influenced by such things as well like when it comes to weird relationship dynamics or new age relationship dynamics ki pehle yaar live in try kar leta maine jaldi shaadi kar li now i want to do this later you know you know live in has picked up um a lot now picked up earlier also people must have been in live in relationships it just people are more vocal about it yeah um because of course the acceptance that okay this is just becoming a norm um if you're asking my opinion about it i think looking at those relationship where you were dating for 10 years and 2 years into marriage and you were filing for divorce it's okay to just have have a live in relationship to see how you guys are together 24 hours absolutely yeah also the reason why there was so many divorce divorces happening after the pandemic because two people were never accustomed to living 24/7 together you know everybody oh it's only limited time you're spending with your partner you just wake up you're getting to work you have your social life you're coming back but here you're just stuck with one person yeah and some people really used it to their um you know 
to understand their partners better and some people just fell apart because they were not used to this setup at all. And they just realized, okay, this is not what I signed up for. Both sides. Yeah. True. And a lot of people in live-in relationship also realized it. Because in live-in relationship, you're also going out to work. You have your social circle. But when you're just stuck with one person, so... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're stuck with one person. <laughs> uh, locked in, more like, damn. You know, you're forcefully together. Um, it's not by choice. It's not natural. It's not natural. It's not by choice. Um, so I think for some people, it really worked out. Mm -hmm. um, I can take my example. I got married in Feb and lockdown happened in March. The first month was horrible. I was thinking, what have I done? And you know, I'm sure all my husband must be thinking the same. But after that, the kind of relationship we have now is what we see in people who've been married for 10, 11 years. That kind of understanding, that kind of giving space despite no space. Yeah. So that really helped us. But I've also seen a lot of couple in therapy who've had a major showdown about responsibilities and roles that, oh, who's going to pick up chores? You know, staff wasn't coming in. So a lot of things people had to do themselves. Yeah. Managing kids at home for people who had children. So a lot of those role fights happen, which a lot of women and men have spoken about how difficult that time was for for them to... Absolutely. You know, be there. Um, as individuals, okay? I'm not talking about you. I'm not talking about politically correct. Uh, I'm, I'm, I was speaking to somebody yesterday and we spoke about a term which was, which was beautiful, okay? Uh, uh, there was this video I saw and where, you know... The, Radhika Apte is talking about assumed responsibility in a social dynamics, right? Women are, it's assumed that they'll have that responsibility of managing the home, managing the kids, despite the fact that they have to work, right? And the husband is just, it's an assumed responsibility that he has to go out, earn, come back home, tired, he's done his job, right? Uh, when it comes to marriages, when it comes to that partnership, assumed responsibility is, I think, is as... It's always there. It's as clear as day and light, day and night, right? Anything wrong with that? I'm not asking you to answer the question. I'm not asking you to answer the question. I don't have that dynamic in my relationship. Uh, my husband takes, uh, since he has different timings, many times he takes the children to the doctor if it's required. Um, he, I, I feel I have a very equal relationship because both of us work, and uh, um, really, I mean, we are a team. So in that sense, uh, there are many times that he takes care of domestic chores, as you would call it. You know, if sometimes something has to be ordered, he does it. So I can't. Since you asked personally, what, yeah, I'm asking that you dynamic doesn't as, exist in my house. But do you think assume responsibility is a thing? Do you, and if it's if it's a thing, what's wrong with it? It is a thing, and that's probably why so many marriages are also breaking down, because women are getting independent. They don't. They, yeah. They they feel that is it all bad? They don't want to confirm why. I feel it's bad. I feel it's not fair for a woman to have to balance cooking and making sure the house is in a in a neat and tidy condition and also working and the husband gets away with just working. I don't think it's fair at all. And That's fair. I understand your viewpoint, right? Yeah. Let's say the husband makes twenty five thousand a month. Be random number, okay? It doesn't the number's not important. The wife makes one lakh a, a month and she's still doing that. Do you think the woman would respect the man? Do you think there's going to be that mutual respect Even both sides? Even if a woman is earning 2 lakh, this woman or the husband is earning 5 lakh, the woman is not going to respect internally. She might showcase a very different world. Okay. How would you respect somebody who doesn't respect you? It's not... I, I think I framed it wrong, right? Um, I'm saying uh, we're in a mutually agreed partnership where I understand that it's the woman who's pulling a major weight, right? when it comes to taking care of a professional job as well and taking care of the family and the kids and the home, right? And he's just working. But my question was like, if he's, if they're both set in their way more or less for 5, 10 years, 15 years, people do this for 30 years, 40 years of their marriage, right? And our parents have done it. A bunch of people have done it, right? 
And over the years, this has become a thing that it's an assumed responsibility that you're going to do this, I'm going to do this. Is it all bad? Because uh, if it's bad, then if the dynamics was to change and the roles were reversed, the gender roles were reversed, would each genders respect each other equally? Are you saying women, can women respect men who are taking care of traditionally their domestic jobs? Your case, I know. Because you're going to draw it out from your personal case, right? I get it. No, but you also said something to do with income, which whether a woman would respect a man who earns less than her. I think these are such personal choices. That's because you're that kind of a person, is it? No, my yeah, husband... Because you have that liberal point of view. You are open-minded. You understand how the world works. And come on, like from an educated mind, it's it's fine. Outside view, fine. But is it is it actually... A thing like women will respect their husband who doesn't make that much money. I think love wins at the end of the day. If she really loves the man, she would want to be with him. That's corny. So, what no, is the answer the you truth. want? You want no, us to I don't tell want you an answer. Two I just, women sitting here. Are you, no are you asking me in an arranged setup with will a woman marry a guy in an arranged setup where the guy is earning less? In my opinion, no. She won't marry that man. She right? won't marry. In my opinion, she won't marry that man. Because Our opinions. End, my opinion, your yeah. opinion, her opinion. Right? Because, they talk about opinions. Because as a woman, most women when they're thinking about marriage are also thinking about a time when they will not be working. When they're having kids. Right? When they take that break. Is that person going to be good enough to take care of me the when man I'm is not, not working? That. I don't know what men are thinking. Can the man think that? Are you, are you speaking for all men? In his... No, I'm thinking about that man who has to marry the woman who's, who's, on... not, who's planning on calling it quits one day when it comes to a job and looking for financial independence because the husband's going to provide. Now, as a man, as that no. man, can I plan now it like that? Now, the question here is different because I said if she was to marry that guy, probably no. Yeah. If the question is once she's married and the husband doesn't have a job or loses his job or is not earning then enough. Then eventually, yeah. Then it really depends on the effort that woman wants to put in to be there or to show up for their partner. And that's what marriage is about. Okay. You're not going to get two of us, women sitting here, to say that we will ditch that guy <laughs> and go <laughs> respect our partners. Personally, less. if you ask me, no. And like Rinali said, even my husband shares complete responsibility of home. That's nice. And... Um, you know, takes care of very little and small things and probably I might say that I take less care of the house. Mm -hmm. He's more on top of things. I'm always out. Um This is all this is recorded. Uh, that's okay, Rochika. he'd be happy hearing this. Sometimes he'd I think say, she, he she's praising him and I think hats off to him when he's doing that, yeah. No, it's a joke that lawyers make because you know it's now on yeah, record. Yeah, that's so true, it's on record. Don't don't contradict yourself yeah. later. Yeah. <laughs> no, I will not. Yeah. You're gonna get a written typed Manuscript also coming later. No, no. I I think he's a really nice person. He'll not take this up later also. Um, if at all needed. But I feel yes, and that's the reason women are becoming unhappier in their marriages because there are certain times when even if the husband is not, the in laws pitch in to make the person feel that oh my god, my son is doing something that you should have been doing. And that's where the whole, you know, family dynamic comes yeah, in. Yeah, I know play. what you mean, yeah. Oh yes, I had this one client who's, uh, of course, as usual, the mother, the son, the sons. I mean, when I say son, I mean husband's mother is there and the father's there. And the uh, the mother looks at me and says, can you imagine? He has to cook food for both of them. What is this happening, you know? <laughs> and this is a woman saying, why should her son not be cooking? I, I find that astounding. That women so often... Don't help other women. This thing of... For uh, sure, for sure. Well, men are no good to other men as well. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so it's it's all even there. Um, you can call my friends. None of them are nice enough to actually give us any sound advice in any case. They'll give us torrid advice and eventually they'll drive you into trouble. Um, You're talking from past experience, no, Richard? All friends are like that. <laughs> um, without taking a pause, quickly... Love marriage or arranged marriage? Uh, love marriage. So you can blame no one but yourself. Love marriage or arranged marriage? Pros and cons for both. Uh, so no marriage. <laughs> That's also an option. <laughs> there are pros of that also. Yeah. Do, do you think marriage is an old institution like Hogya Bas? No, I still believe in it. It just makes leaving more difficult. 
leaving more difficult when you're married to somebody. In a relationship, people break up in a jiffy. Aren't we talking about that it's a good thing that you can leave someone when you want to? In relationship, that happens. But in marriage, you still figure out two, three, four steps and then you also think about a lawyer. And then you also think about so many other things. So what you're are we like, trying to achieve when we, we can't get out of something we want to get out of? We can't achieve anything. Work on right? it. Work on it. Really think about it before leaving. Okay. That makes I always sense. say, see, leaving a person will always be an option. I suggest don't keep it as option A. Let it be an option D. There's A, B, C. Try those out. If it is not working on D will always be there. I will never tell somebody just stay in a marriage because now you're married. Breaking something is always easier than to actually build it up because that takes more time and effort, right? Uh, and when it when you build it up, it's actually more fruitful. And uh, you guys in construction, right, always say this, right? Banarat aram se bana, torna bahut asan hai. But the cost of breaking that is going to be huge. So build mindfully. Amazing. Um, I think we we've we've had a quite an interactive session today, and this was fun actually because uh, to know. Uh, the politically correct side of yours. <laughs> no, <laughs> no politically correct. You are always you are the mischief maker trying to get us to. Re- I'm 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 not Karan Zohar. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'm not gonna. Uh, but uh, I think uh, I have a uh, okay. One last question. Uh, Pro feminism. Would I ever say I'm not? Of course not. <laughs> no, I have a problem with it. No problem. Feel free to ask That's us questions. That's the beauty of feminism. <laughs> No, no. So, um, um, I have a problem with people who don't understand it, uh, and I, I'm, yeah, I think I'm gonna get death threats after this. Uh, half of the women professing the 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 virtues behind feminism don't understand it themselves. A feminism is it's hard for me to define. To be honest, I think a, a, a somebody who's balanced, I'm not balanced properly. Somebody who's balanced. Who understands that that feminine need and who understands that need of the hour can probably define it better. There's no right way to define it. I think you just need to be liberal in your thinking, right? You just need to understand that each of the person on the this side or that side, being a guy or being a woman, everybody has their rights. Everybody has their space. Everybody has their uh, aspirations. Everybody has. Everybody needs love, right? But when I just talk about feminism, I think sometimes, sometimes I think women are using it as a tool. To just do male bashing sometimes. Uh, we men are horrible people, I understand. But we are not all wrong. We are not all horrible, right? And I think that appreciation is far less. And that male bashing is far more when it comes to taking that, uh, uh, taking the idea of feminism and using it like a weapon rather than anything else. So sometimes I have a problem with that. I agree with you. You do. I agree with you, and uh, on that note, I will say I really appreciate the fact that you make your wife a cup of tea in the morning. I love that. I love that about. <laughs> I I love that. So this is something my dad taught me. I I want to share something personal with you. The day I got married, the two days later, right? He's like, "Bita, I'll tell you a successful wedding ka ek mantra bata deta hu. Subah uth, pehli chai tu bana ke pila de." Sare din tere ko tension nahi degi, bilkul khush rahegi, and she'll be like, "My husband loves me." तो भाई सारा दिन बिजी रहे उसको तेरे से कुछ नहीं चाहिए क्योंकि सुबह की चाय के पंद्रह मिनट तुम्हारे हैं ऋषभ आई डोंट नो इफ दिस गोइंग टू हेल्प यू पोस्ट दिस दिस डिस्कशन बिकॉज़ नाउ शी नोस व्हाई यू आर मेकिंग द कप ऑफ टी माय डैड सेड दिस इन फ्रंट ऑफ हर सो दैट दिस पीस या ही सेज बहुत अच्छा तरीका है एंड ऑल शी वांट्स इज योर अटेंशन थोड़ा सा बस यार दिन में 15 मिनट ही तो हैं साथ बैठ चाय पी गो गेट स्टार्टेड स्टार्ट किकिंग दिन पूरा है तुम्हारे लिए तुम गो achieve your dreams or whatever and she's going to start working on her job as well right right but wo subah ke 10 15 minute aadha ghanta ek dusre ko de do so that you can discuss the day before and maybe you can de- discuss the day ahead or the week ahead or the month ahead and you can plan your life like that no, it's a great thing that's what we technically in therapy also say that you know spend at least 15 20 minutes for your partner do something for them sound advice right i think i think my dad got it easy because my mum is a tea lover तो तो बड़ा था। हमने अपना अपना पूरा पूरा ज्ञान देने की मैंने तो बहुत कोशिश करी पूरा अपना ज्ञान शेयर करने एजेंडा से आए थे ऋषभ जी आप 
अब मैंने एजेंडाज आर ऑलवेज क्लियर इट्स एब्सोल्युटली क्लियर कि मुझे हर तरीके का फैसेट कवर करना है एंड पीपल शुड अंडरस्टैंड वेयर आई एम कमिंग फ्रॉम एंड देर आर टाइप्स ऑफ पीपल देर आर द प्रॉब्लम्स बींग फेस बाई पीपल विच वी इवन वी कॉन्ट इवन लाइक बिगिन टू अंडरस्टैंड और बिगिन टू इमेजिन द काइंड ऑफ लेवल्स ऑफ इशूज दैट पीपल आर फेसिंग इन दर लाइफ एंड आई एम समटाइम्स ऑल स्ट्रक बाई पीपल यू वोट बिलीव द नंबर ऑफ पीपल टेक्सटिंग मी ऑन इंस्टाग्राम दीज डे स्पेसिफ ऑन द स्पेसिफिक आस्क पेज and uh, uh, there's this guy who is talking about adoption and he says rishab tiko pata hai ki hamare yahan adoption rate kitna low hai and you know there are so many kids who are just they have no future because in india we still believe ki mujhe apna hi bachcha karna hai i rather have my own kid but i'm not going to adopt there is the emotional maturity or that sense of understanding is not that point is that kid is still you know going to give you joy but we don't find that joy with an adopted kid we find that joy in our own kid and he just started talking about it and i'm listening to him for 30 minutes on a phone call i'm like okay mujhe to pata hai that's a kuch hota hai india mein mujhe to abhi kuch bhi nahi pata society ke issues ke bare mein so i'm just it's it's a lot of fun for me to interact with knowledgeable, knowledgeable people as you as yourselves and uh, thank you for coming and sharing all your thoughts and ideas though i think rinalini held her back a little it bit it was a pleasure and no you kept it really simple you asked simple question we answered simply yeah i didn't i didn't put you too much into a spot i that's hope that's right? true great uh, i'm going to share uh, their email ids if you want to talk to uh, ruchika uh, if you want to speak to somebody who's a psychologist and she's great at her job of course uh, and if you uh, ever want to speak to uh, an experienced lawyer like amrinalini um, i'm going to share her email id and their linkedin as well you can reach out to them directly or you can uh, comment in the video section of course and uh, you can follow me at uh, instagram where uh, my handle is uh, the specific ask and you can text me there or you can write to me at the specific ask@gmail.com thank you for listening in have a great day